Welcome to Beyond Thriving, where we take a deeper dive into our Thriver Thursday episodes. For today's episode, we are focusing on obsessive compulsive disorder, better known as OCD. I'm Gabriel Kerr. And I'm Jade Anderson. Today we're joined by Jeff Szymanski, Executive Director of the International OCD Foundation, Dr. Chris Pittenger, Director of the Yale OCD Research Clinic, writer Vinay Krishnan, and journalist Shayla Love. Let's begin. Dr. Chris, I want to start with you. A lot of people have heard of the term OCD, but not mm -hmm. many may know the specific definition. Can you explain that? Sure. So OCD is the word, the term that we use to describe someone who's suffering because of obsessions and compulsions. You can have either one, technically, but most everyone who has the diagnosis has both. Obsessions, getting a thought stuck in your head, compulsion, feeling like you need to do something and over, that, that's not unusual, that's just part of the human condition. But in some people, they get stuck in a cycle of obsessions and compulsions that cause enough distress and enough difficulty in their lives that it, it, it you know, gets a diagnosis, and that's what we mean by OCD. Now, Jeff, for our thriver, Jason, his symptoms manifested at a very young age, and it started with him picking up trash off the ground. What are some other ways that OCD specifically manifests in others? Yeah, so it could be um, asbestos. It could be um, getting poisoned. There's also over-responsibility. I'm extra worried that he was picking up trash to make sure, sure no one tripped over it, maybe. Um, people that they're driving, they hit a, hit a bump in the road. They worry that, oh my goodness, did I just run someone over rather than it's just a bump in the road. So really the core of OCD is this struggle around these intrusive thoughts and images that Chris was talking about and then trying to make sense of them where in the end you just end up stuck and you end up trying to, to figure something out, not sitting with uncertainty. What would you suggest they should arm themselves with? If you do figure out that you may have OCD and you go to a general mental health provider, they probably are not equipped to actually treat you. And you get misdiagnosed, and even if you, they give you treatment, most of the time it's the wrong treatment. So making sure that people know exposure response prevention therapy, um, medication therapy are the places to start. Incredibly important point because we're kind of talking about this conceptually right now, but the consequences on the patient mm -hmm. side are just enormous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like for me with harm OCD, it's not just that the person next to me might be in, in danger, it's often that I'm the danger, like I could be, you know, like the monster in the nightmare. So like imagine like going on a date with those thoughts in your head, it's not something you bring up on a first date, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's like when you like love someone, when you get really close to someone, those thoughts just get more and more intense. Um, so something that's supposed to be so like joyful can become just so like, you know, it just terrorizes your mind. And what steps do you take in your daily life to combat that? The ERP is just, you know, it's the way to go, exposure and response prevention. So since I'm so obsessed with these harm thoughts, I would likely write out scripts of awful things happening to people that I love, and I'll have to read the scripts over and over again. I'll record them into my phone and, like, listen to them as I'm walking around, and eventually, like, I habituate to it. So it's kind of like going to the gym, like, for my mind. It's like a mental workout. So, like, you know, two days later, when the thoughts just, like, come up as I'm, like, writing an essay, and I want to like focus on them, I can be like, you know what, there's that violent thought again, it's okay, I can let it sit over there, I'm gonna focus on this essay. And like that shift is like so important, that's what we're trying to get everyone to do, like shift from what OCD is telling you to focus on to focusing on what you actually value, what's actually important in your life, what you actually wanna do. And if you can make that shift, then I mean, you can totally function normally with OCD. Now Shayla, talk to me about making that shift and what you've seen in your reporting uh, in regards to people who've experienced shame or guilt. What can you tell us about that? People with OCD often have this curse of insight, which is we, we know that the anxiety and the thoughts and the feelings are probably not true, but there's the uncertainty, and so you feel like you have to do something about it anyway. ERP and also um, a, a CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy tool called ACT, which is Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, that can create a little space between that thought and then what you actually do in your real life. So acceptance and commitment therapy, I've heard a lot of people describe this as really helpful um, in relationship with exposure therapy. It's basically saying, you know, here I am having these intrusive, anxious thoughts again. Rather than do everything I can to try to make them go away, I'm just gonna let them be there. So I think that in combination with exposure therapy, getting practice facing your, your deepest fears in a therapy session every single week, those two things together have helped a lot of people overcome OCD um, 
in the sense that it doesn't go away forever and completely, but they can go about their daily life and do the things that matter to them. That was like a huge transformational moment, like in my treatment, like realizing, oh, don't fight this thought, like walk towards it, like lean into mm -hmm. it. You know, you walk towards the things that scare you the most and eventually you realize either this isn't a threat to me or this is like a minor threat that I'm totally equipped to deal with. And so that's like a huge shift that, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up because everyone with OCD or who thinks they might have OCD, they should definitely know that. What are some treatments that have helped those suffering with OCD? Um, OCD was the first disorder where when, when we learned back in the 1980s and 1990s, we learned how to take pictures of the brain that show you how active different parts of the brain are. It was the first psychiatric condition where it was shown that particular parts of the brain are hyperactive. And these insights into what's happening in the brain are informing research to try to figure out new treatments. Because if we can find other ways to modulate that brain circuitry, that could be a new frontier in treatment. And there are a few with a treatment called transcranial magnetic stimulation. I'm hopeful that that'll you know, lead us to additional options for treatment. How can someone watching right now know the difference between being hypervigilant and actually having OCD? In regards to whether people deciding whether or not they have OCD or whether they should seek out a doctor, I've always heard of people really having a difficulty doing things that they love in their life. A, a sense of impairment, it, it often feels like sort of the walls are closing in around you. If there's a list of things that you typically do every week or every day, you're, start, you're starting to cross some of those things off. You're avoiding certain things, you can't do certain things. Once that list really starts to diminish, then you know it's a spectrum, but like they said, once you really have this level of impairment where you can't do the things that you used to love to do, then it's usually helpful to see a professional. Thank you to our guests. It was a remarkable conversation. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for your tips and advice. For a list of resources on OCD, please visit our resources tab on thriverthursday.com. Thank you for watching Beyond Thriving.